Welcome back. Today we are talking about buckets. I have had so many questions about buckets, people wanting to understand how to use them in their social media. So we are going to do uh, some comprehensive information about buckets. I'm going to do a little series so that you will get to talk about each aspect and each of the videos won't be too long. So what are buckets? This is part one of this series. In the context of social media content planning, what, when people are talking about buckets, they are referring to a category or a theme that helps organize and structure your content. So as you create your production schedule, you have different themes and you can share these different themes on the various platforms. When you use buckets, it, it can greatly increase your social media strategy. Your strategy will get better and it will help make sure that your content is diverse but that it also fits within the same realm. Because when people are coming to your social media platform, there are a couple of things that they want. This is something I learned from Daryl Eves, who is the master, probably number one in the world about um, knowing how to use buckets, knowing how to grow on YouTube. Some of the most famous YouTubers that you would recognize their names, hire Daryl Eves to help them grow their YouTube platform. And so this is what he taught me about buckets. Number one, people want to feel like they know what they're coming for. They want continuity. They're coming to your channel because they want a certain thing. If your channel is about recipes, they want to know that they're coming and they're going to get recipes. They're not going to get something different, but there's, there's a challenge because if my channel is about recipes and I'm giving, I'm teaching people how to make food, it depends. Is it that I show people how to make food? Because some people like to watch other people make food. They don't want to make it at all. They don't want to make the recipe. They don't want to create it. They love watching you make it, period. That's what they love to do. Some people, they don't want to watch you make it. I don't have time for that. I just give me the recipe and I want to make it myself and make sure it has enough instructions so I know exactly what to do. But some people might want to watch you make it and they want to hear all about your life story and then they also would like a copy of the recipe because they would like to mimic it and then they want to be able to ask you questions because they don't understand something about the recipe so it totally depends on your audience so one thing your audience wants continuity they want to know what to expect but the other challenge is they also want to be surprised so we'll talk later in this series about how to do both of those things. But today we're talking about what buckets are and how you use them in social media. So it's going to improve your strategy. It helps make sure your content changes up. It makes sure your content is diverse. It, it helps make sure your content is entertaining or engaging and that it's aligned with your brand's objectives so that when people come to your channel, they know what to expect and they're getting exactly what they want. So here are some of the reasons why you should use content buckets when you're planning your social media content. But actually, before I get into that, you know what? I think what I wanna do is I wanna give you some examples of buckets. So for example, if I have, if I have a recipe channel and I'm teaching people how to, how to make food, one of mine might be how to make blank. Now your bucket always needs to have a blank in the title. And that blank can be filled in with anything. It, a lot of people think the blank, where the blank word would go, is they only can fill it in with one word. No, that can be filled in with several words or one word. So for example, how to make the best pasta you've ever had that resembles what they make in Italy. Now. You don't normally want your title to be that long. You want your title to only be 55 letters that include spaces or less. But so you see how what I'm trying to show you is an example of how a bucket where the blank is, it can be some big, long thing or it can or it can be how to make linguine. It can be one word or it can be a few words or it can be a lot of words. So just realize that that's a bucket. Now, um, I asked Daryl one time as I was creating my buckets for my channels as he, I was in his training and I asked him, I said, so can I just like, can I have just sentences? He said, no, the buckets have to have a blank. 
It has to have a blank that you fill in the blank. And so you always want to have a certain number of buckets. For example, if you are posting three times, three times a week, you would want to have maybe six to eight buckets. If you are posting one time a week, you might just need three or four buckets. So it depends on how often you're posting. So some of my, if I have a bucket on, let's pick a different type of channel. Let's say I love Star Wars and I discuss Star Wars and I'm kind of a, an addict. I watch all the movies and we discuss all the movies. I might say the difference between blank and blank. So it might be the difference between Chewbacca and Darth Vader. I can put in whatever I want, but it's got to be Star Wars related. Then a second bucket might be why blank always does blank. Why Yoda always gives advice backwards. Why, um, let me think of another one. Why um, the spaceships always look like they are, they came from outer space. Why, I could do whatever I want, okay? So those are examples. If I have a music channel, I might say the top, it might, one of my buckets might be the top 10 blank. If I have an emotional channel where I'm teaching about um, how to deal with um, men mental challenges and understanding psychology and narcissism and depression and all of those things, I might say um, ten more, five warning signs of blank. So you want to create your buckets. Now, let me tell you what buckets are good for. This is what they do for your channel. Number one, and I'm talking your channel, your page. I don't care if you're on TikTok or Instagram. It doesn't matter. It, this is what it creates for you. Number one, these are the benefits. Consistency. Content buckets help maintain consistency in your messaging, in your branding, and it helps make sure that your audience receives a coherent, unified, understandable experience across all your social media platforms. So they know what they're getting. If, if they're coming because you're teaching them how to, put, how to do makeup, or you're teaching them how to fix cars, and then you start talking politics, you're gonna start losing audience. This helps you stay on track. The second thing is balance. When you organize your content into different categories or themes like this, you can create a balanced mix of all different content types. It'll look like you have all these unique variety of information, but it avoids overemphasis on any one topic, so you're not doing the same thing over and over again, or it, it will also help you make sure that you're keeping your audience engaged and interested. So you're kind of rotating around. Now, one mistake I made is I thought that if I posted, if bucket number one was um, five warning signs of blank, and I, and I posted that video on Monday, I thought, oh, every Monday I have to post video number one. No, that's not true. You can post those videos anytime. And you look at the algorithms and the tracking on the back end of your social media platform so that you can see when the best time to post. But that's something that it takes time and you watch what those you watch what's happening on the back happening on the backside, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So number three, planning and scheduling. Your content buckets will help simplify your planning, your scheduling, it makes it so easy. It makes it so the process is just a rotational framework for organizing your content. So for example, we were just doing, we're working with a massive organization right now and teaching them how to set up their production schedule. And so, and it's a very complicated process and yet we need the end users, all the people who are creating the content, all the people who are, um, translating the content into different languages. There's all these pieces going on and we've got several languages that we're dealing with. So we need it to be simple for the end user or the end workers who are trying to make these things happen. And so we've created this production schedule and guess what? For the month of May, we were going through the month of May and for Reels and this is for Facebook, for their Facebook page, for Reels, for stories, for videos, for the ads they're going to put we rotate the different buckets. And so it was fairly easy because you just wanna make sure you're not doing bucket eight every, every two days. 
And that way there's a variety of content and it's working out really amazing. We're, we're launching some really fun things and starting to see some really good results from it. So it's, it's really, really a, an easy way to keep track of what you need to post. And when you have a well-defined set of categories, you can easily allocate your scheduled posts. You can make sure that your social media channels are always populated with fresh content and with relevant content. It can have to do with current events or trends, but stays within the niche that you've created for yourself. And that keeps your audience happy. So number four is target audience engagement. When you create content buckets that cater to the interests of your audience and your target market, then all of a sudden it boosts engagement. It can drive conversations, it fosters stronger connection with you, and it keeps, of course, your content relevant again. That you'll find that that keeps coming up because sometimes people will, there will be influencers who see something happening in the world. Maybe a tragedy happens and they want to acknowledge it but if you just go off script and acknowledge the tragedy, then all of a sudden people are thinking, I came here to find out about recipes. So if you, if you, have, your, um, if you have your bucket title and it says how to, how, to, how to create joy by blank, how, like, how to create joy by um, using a recipe that blank, whatever, you know, I'm just kind of off the cuff. So if I do that and now there's a tragedy, let's say a war starts somewhere. How to create love and joy by making a recipe that brings people together or that reminds people of their heritage and it might be a cultural dish. So you see what I'm saying? You have your bucket and now all of a sudden it, it keeps you within the bounds that keeps your channel successful. Number five is goal alignment. This is the last one. Your content buckets will help make sure that your social media content is aligned with your broader market so that it only, not only fits your, um, your closer target audience, but as you reach out to a larger and larger audience, it will keep you in your boundaries, but it will open you up to so many more audiences. And it, it will be audiences that reflect your objectives and you can consistently share your content and it will be content that supports and advances your brand and mission and gives your audience what they want. That's what's powerful. Now, how do you make sure you keep them surprised? Well, you have test buckets. So let's say you're posting once a week and that means you're going to have two or three buckets and then on top of that, so those are the buckets you rotate, but you now are also going to have a couple of test buckets. So you create two whole new titles with a blank and you rotate those in and you start to watch. And maybe the three buckets that you have that are your standard buckets, one of them doesn't do very well. It consistently keeps not doing well, but one of your test buckets does amazing. Then what will happen is you'll trade that out. Now, keep in mind that when you are on social media, there are algorithms that take some time for them to figure out who your audience is, who you are trying to reach, what your content is, so they can bring the right audience to you. So you don't wanna keep changing out your content every week or every month. After a month, you're thinking, well, it's not working, and then you keep changing it out. You won't see success that way. You've got to go for a while. On YouTube, it's, it's 90 days and theirs is usually the shortest one because they have the best algorithm that there is online. So just as a summary, remember to effectively use your content buckets, you need to start by identifying the key themes or categories that you're going to align with your brand and your audience interests. And these might include product updates. It might be industry news. It might be educational content. It might be user-generated content. And for part two, we're going to go into much more detail about different types of buckets so that you can get a better idea of what you can do with your buckets. Um, some of them might be behind the scenes insights, promotional material, and there's a big list of so many more. Once you've defined your content buckets, 
Now you get to start planning. You schedule posts that are within each category and it makes sure that your social media strategy stays balanced, stays engaging, stays entertaining, stays on brand, is exactly what your audience wants. So I'm excited for you to start exploring with buckets, start looking at what your buckets might be, and good luck with that, and I'll see you in the next video.